hi i hope your day is going okay now during my last video i shared some insights on tips about leadership and today i want to share some insights on mistakes that i have made as a leader why because i decided to have honest open candid conversations on this channel and so that you can get to see real relatable content when it comes to leadership to entrepreneurship and to growth and impact so that's why i'm sharing my journey please subscribe to this channel help the channel grow by subscribing it's free to subscribe so now let's get into it we had a mental health awareness event it was our fourth across the country and it was to be in Nakuru, but this is where things changed. Number one, this event had been scheduled for last weekend, but on the 2nd of July, it's a Saturday. So that was one of the lessons that I had to learn. But before I tell you about the lesson, let me tell you about the mistake. So we agreed on a date for our circuit. What happens is we reach out to our network and find out um, who is located in the county that we want to go to for the next circuit. And then we make contact with them so that they can help with facilitating, finding a venue, mobilizing people to attend the event and um, making sure that the event is successful. So essentially people who are resourceful, who can be mobilizers for, as well as event planners so we have this contact in nakuru we agree on the venue we agree on the date we agree on the time but mistake number one we do not confirm the time and the date with our venue until the day before the event so on the Friday, when we're having our event on Saturday, is when our contact in Nakuru visits the venue to confirm that we're going to have our event the following day. And the venue says, no, you can't have your event here tomorrow because we are doing stock taking and we had not finished doing stock taking and that we had and therefore you cannot have your event here tomorrow. Guys. <laughs> You know what disappointment is? Yes, I felt it. I felt the disappointment. I remember receiving the call from our contact in Nakuru and they said, I'm so sorry to disappoint you, but we can't have our event tomorrow. And my heart sank. And I was like, okay. Now that's the lesson as a leader. The, that you, you've had the mistake, yes. Now, the lesson here had to be on how to manage and handle disappointment, both for me as the team lead and also for our contact in Nakuru and for everybody who was planning to attend this event. So, the lesson had to be in managing disappointment. So, I was really disappointed, very actually. I had packed, I was ready, I was on my way to leaving so that I could travel to Nakuru for the circuit. So I was disappointed. The, our contact in Nakuru was disappointed because the event wasn't going to happen and we had really trusted that this was going to work out and it hadn't. The people who were supposed to attend this event were disappointed. I remember the following day there are still people who didn't get the communications that had to go out for the postponing of the event and they showed up and so the the venue had to call us to to tell us we have people here who are claiming there should be an event here but we are not having one so that having to manage their disappointment so that was rough the lesson that i picked there was you have to be very quick with PR and communications so that people can be able to... You have to give direction as the leader on what is next. Now that there is no event, what do we tell the, the people? What do we tell the audience? How, what do we tell the team that is planning for this event? And so you have to be quick with your PR and your comms so that people can be able to know 
that this is not happening as quickly as possible. You also have to be ready to hear the disappointments of your audience, of your team, of panelists, stakeholders, everybody who was going to be part of the success of this event. So you, you have to be ready to hear and allow them to express their disappointment and then be able to also give a direction of, I know this is really disappointing, However, we are working on a plan and we are going to make this up to you. So then you have to come up with a plan B. So that was mistake number one, lesson number one. Let's go to mistake number two. Mistake number two was when it comes to resources, more specifically money. So you see, for these circuits, we are fundraising to be able to raise money for the circuits and also to be able to raise money for free therapy services. I'll tell you about the whole project at in a, in a couple of seconds. But this was the second mistake, and this is a mistake that many of us make, not just as leaders, but entrepreneurs, business owners. It's a mistake that I have also made a number of times, and I'm learning. <coughs> Sorry, I'm learning the lessons so i we did a budget allocation for the circuit and we estimated that this circuit would cost us this amount of money x amount of money so we were requisitioning for the money from the finance department we requisitioned for just that exact amount of money but on the ground <laughs> things are normally different so when we went to the ground we had to now cover for costs that we hadn't even anticipated like for example when we went to the venue the sound was given to us for free but we needed to buy batteries for the microphones which was money that had not been budgeted for we had to buy snacks for the and refreshments for the circuit we had budgeted for about 50 people but we hadn't anticipated that this number might not get 50 it might actually be slightly less so some of the items that we got we now had to find a way of how do we now save on this budget so that we can be able to cater for these other unexpected expenses so that's the lesson the mistake is in always under budgeting so the lesson is in always have a budget that's a bit on the higher end so that you can be able to have some wiggle room financially or resource wise for the success of what you're planning as a leader so that was mistake number two and lesson number two mistake number three and lesson number three the mistake that we made in the planning of these circuits was our communication with now the teams was poor why because we were having a panel of three professionals who are going to be the expert voice in this conversation in nakuru but we didn't brief them in advance in adequate time to be able to prep to prepare for this conversation so this is where the impromptu public speaking skills of our panelists had to come in because now in terms of briefing them we are briefing them the day of some were briefing them the day of the event, others were briefing them the day, the night before the event. So now, one of the lessons that is the final one I'm sharing in this video when it comes to organizing successful events is always have very good, effective communication with everybody that's part of the success of the project. And in as much time in advance as practically possible so that there's room for changes there's room for questions there's room for ideas and there's room for flexibility so it's good yes when you have a panel that is able to think on their feet and is able to go with the flow but it is better when they are more prepared than just going with the flow so those are the three mistakes that i'm sharing from the circuit that we had in Akuru. Now let me tell you about what the circuit was about and what else this is all about before you go. Because there's some way that you can get involved. So Hopewell Foundation provides free therapy services to people in need of therapy sessions. Currently we are providing therapy sessions to a hundred young people this year. We so far have 67 of them already receiving free therapy services. 
Two, we raise awareness around mental health by organizing awareness circuits across the country. We started last year with Athi River, Eldoret, Kisumu. This year we started with Nairobi and most recently Nakuru. We will be going to Mombasa, Kajado, Machakos and Kiambu for the rest of the year. Number three, we break stigma by telling stories of people with lived experience around mental health, people who are advocates for mental well-being, or people who have been indirectly affected by mental health. Now, how can you get involved? You can volunteer to help us plan the circuits. You can volunteer to be a therapist. You can volunteer your skill and competency when it comes to fundraising. That's the first. Number two, you can support us by joining our 20 Bob Challenge and donating as little as 20 shillings. This money goes to buying airtime and data for the counselors that are providing pro bono therapy sessions and also to facilitating the awareness circuits across the country. Number three, you can partner with us. If you are, you are in the mental health space, if you are in the event planning space, if you are in the creative space, then you can partner with us and we can be able to work together, collaborate, make the events and the conversations you are having across the country more impactful, more meaningful, more successful through your involvement as a partner. Finally, you can come in as a sponsor. You can sponsor one of the circuits that we are having. You can sponsor one of the individuals that, that is receiving free therapy services. Or you can sponsor the program um, in itself. If you would love to do that, please reach out to us. The information will be in the description of this video. So check out the information. You can send us an email, send us a message on WhatsApp, and we will be in touch. Finally, please subscribe to my channel because very soon I will be sharing more lessons, more mistakes, more tips, real, raw, relatable. Bye.